Hello students, welcome to UGC E PG Pathsana. I am Dr. A. Sahir, working as assistant professor and head in charge in the Department of Technology from Banarim Institute of Technology, Sathya Mangalam. Let me move on our today's topic on causes of food spoilage and deterioration. All food products are composed of biological raw materials. Biological products inherently spoil and deteriorate over time. In order to cause food spoilage, microorganisms must first be present on the food. Food products may become contaminated at the farm, for example, milk from infected cows, by the end users or at any point in between further processing, packaging, distribution, etc. Each microorganism has specific requirements and conditions, both of the food itself and of the environment, that must be met in the order to grow, including nutrient requirements water activity, pH, temperature, oxygen availability and the presence of antimicrobial agents. Food spoilage can be defined in several different ways. Generally, a food is considered to be spoiled when it is no longer acceptable to the consumer. It is nothing but a natural deterioration of organic matter. Because of food spoilage, there may be a change in color, flavor, texture, aroma of the food. Another case of spoilage could be that deterioration of nutrients. Example, vitamin content in the food which no longer meet its declared nutritional value. The time it takes for a food product to reach one of these spoilage conditions is generally termed the product's self life. It is important to understand what type of spoilage may occur in a product and how best to reduce the rate of deterioration of the product and how to properly measure or direct its occurrence. On completion of this session, you will be able to understand about spoilage and categories of food spoilage, then components responsible for food spoilage. Let me see about the causes of spoilage and categories of food spoilage. The three main categories of food spoilage that can occur are physical spoilage, chemical spoilage and microbiological spoilage. There are some overlaps between these categories and often spoilage in one category can help to promote spoilage in another category. There are several main factors that influence most type of spoilages. These factors include temperature, pH, water activity, exposure to oxygen and light and nutrients or chemicals available in the food product. First we see about physical spoilage. The first type of spoilage that can occur is due to physical changes or instability. This can include physical damage such as bruising of fresh fruits and vegetables. Bruising of fruits and vegetables can occur during transportation and distribution or by dropping the product. If the physical damage is severe, the product may become unacceptable to the consumer. There can be a color change due to enzymatic browning as cells are ruptured and there is often loss of water content at the bruise. In addition, bruising causes damage to cells and allows microbial growth to occur more readily. Breaking of dry, brittle product can make many products such as crackers, potato chips, ready to eat cereals and many frozen foods unacceptable. The use of well designed packaging systems that protect the product from vibrational and mechanical damage during distribution and handling can minimize the effect of bruising and breakage. First we can see about the components involved in the physical deterioration. First is moisture content. Most other physical changes or instabilities involve moisture or mass transfer of components in the food. A frequent cause of degradation of food product is a change in their water content that is water loss, gain or migration. The change in moisture alone may cause the product to become unacceptable though frequently it also leads to other problems such as microbial or chemical degradation. Moisture transfer occurs in foods due to gradient in chemical potential which is directly related to the food's water activity. Water activity is defined as the equilibrium relative humidity for a product divided by 100. In bakery products such as bread, moisture migration can lead to staling. Staling involves moisture from the crumb migrating to the crust. This causes the crumb to become drier, firmer and more crumbly while the crust becomes tougher and less crisp. Moisture changes can play a larger role in the acceptability of many fruits and vegetables. Leafy vegetables will lose moisture to the environment and will wilt and have increased senescence if stored without proper packaging. 
Moisture loss can be a problem for even deeply frozen foods that can lose water since the humidity or water activity in the environment at those temperatures is less than 100%. At 20 degrees Celsius, water activity is 0.8 to and at 40 degrees Celsius, water activity is 0.68. Therefore, moisture can evaporate or sublime from the surface to cause drying or freezer burn. To prevent moisture loss, frozen products should be completely sealed using moisture barrier packaging during storage. The next we see about the effect of temperature. Temperature has a significant effect on the quality of fresh fruits and vegetables. Each crop has its own inherent rate of respiration and optimum temperature range to slow ripening and senescence and to maximize its post harvest life. In addition, climatic fruits source a larger increase in ethylene production during ripening. Ethylene is a strong plant growth regulator and exposed to ethylene tends to accelerate the senescence of most crops. Therefore, eliminating or reducing exposure to ethylene will delay ripening and senescence in most crops and will extend their post-harvest life. The temperature is also important in that because most crops are susceptible to freezer damage when the temperature is lowered slowly and the product becomes partially frozen. This causes breakage of cells and damage to the product. Other crops including most tropical fruits and vegetables are sensitive to sealing injury which occurs before the product begins to freeze generally at temperatures of 5 plus or minus 15 degrees Celsius. Effects of chilling injury include pitting, water soaking, discoloration, development of off flavors, accelerated senescence or ripening or over ripening. However, these effects are sometimes not apparent until week after the injury. Dry food products such as crackers are expected to be crisp. However, if they stored in a high humidity environment, they will absorb water and undergo glass transition to become tough and soggy. Conversely, soft bakery products are expected to be moist and sieve. However, these products tend to lose moisture and become glassy, hard and brittle. As powder gains moisture, it undergoes glass transition and becomes amorphous. This causes the powder to stick together and cake. Then next we see about the effect of air and oxygen. Air comprises of about 80% nitrogen and about 20% oxygen. The level of oxygen in the air is too great for most microorganisms and therefore organisms have developed strategies to counter the harmful effect of oxygen. Our lungs are lined with a substance called surfactant. Surfactant provides a necessary barrier between the tissue of the lung and the oxygen in the air to counteract the caustic effect of the oxygen upon lung tissues. Our bodies and the bodies of other organisms produce antioxidants to counter other undesirable reactions of oxygen with substances called free radicals. By binding to free radicals, antioxidants prevent reactions which are harmful to our bodies. When our organisms no longer have the support of its various physiological support system, the chemical makeup of the organism will start to react with the oxygen in the air. Microorganism which requires the presence of oxygen in order to metabolize organic tissues such as aerobic bacteria and molds are able to colonize those areas of the place which are exposed to the air. This will form colonies upon the food and start to metabolize the flesh of the organism and divide at a rate of one diversion every 20 minutes per bacterial cells. In some causes, as few as 1000 bacteria can be enough to continue a food hygienic risk. Then we see about light. Spoilage of food which is caused by light is called photodegeneration. All food is exposed to light at some time or another. Light can either natural light or artificial light. Light like other forms of energy is made up of different wavelengths. Exposure to light sources can cause foods to change in nature. Pigments may change as may vitamins, levels, fats and proteins. In solid foods, the density of the material such as in meat may block deep penetration of light and therefore the effect of light may only cause changes to happen on the surface of the product. In liquids, light penetration can be much deeper and therefore the effect of photo degeneration can be much more substantial. Other costive agents are cause product spoilages such as lipid oxidation, example degradation in mayonnaise, margarine and salad dressings. Emulsions are thermodynamically unstable systems and consist of droplets of one phase dispersed in the second phase. The long term stability of the emulsion depends upon the emulsifier used and how well the phases are dispersed. Emulsifiers such as egg yolk act at the surface of the droplet to lower surface tension since they have ends that are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Then the emulsion becomes stable by the balancing of attractive forces such as van der Waal forces and repulsive forces such as electrostatic and steric interactions. These forces resist coalescence or creaming increasing the viscosity of the continuous phase can also be done to make the emulsion more stable. Then second is the chemical spoilage. 
Food spoilage can also occur in food product due to the reaction or breakdown of the chemical components of the food including its proteins, lipids and carbohydrates. The rate at which the chemical reaction takes place depends on many factors which were mentioned earlier including water activity, temperature, pH and exposure to lighter oxygen. Each reaction has different optimum conditions. For example, enzyme activity is greatly reduced at lower water activity, especially at moisture levels below the monolayer. The occurrence of each chemical reaction has the potential of affecting color, flavor, aroma or texture of the food product. Protein degradation can involve reactions with proteins and other ingredients or enzymatic activity. Enzymes are complex proteins that act as catalysts that greatly increase chemical reaction rates. There are many types of enzymes that react with different chemical components in foods, many of which are formed by microorganisms. Enzymes that act on other proteins include the protease plasmin. Plasmin can survive pasteurization temperatures and can cause degradation of dairy proteins in milk and coagulation and gelatins. Other proteases can attack proteins in meats and causes the meats to become messy. These proteases can be more readily released from damaged cells for example during multiple freezing or thawing cycles. Other proteases produced by microorganisms have the ability of breaking down meat and milk proteins. Enzymatic activities in fruits and vegetables can cause browning and softening of tissues. Typically, these reactions are catalyzed by phenol oxidase enzymes which react with phenol compounds and oxygen to form undesirable brown pigments. These reactions take place readily when cells are broken by bruising, cutting or peeling. Non-enzymatic browning, for example myelot reaction, is a reaction that occurs between proteins and reducing sugars. The reactions continue further through the structure degradation and polymerization reaction to form volatiles and dark pigments. This causes a browning of the color and sometimes changes in texture of the food product. In addition, myelot browning is normally associated with a loss in nutritional value. The essential amino acid lysine which readily react with reducing sugars is quickly lost during non-enzymatic browning. Chemical spoilage of carbohydrates can include gelatinization or retrodegradation reaction and browning reactions. Mylod browning which was discussed earlier is a major degradation reaction that can occur with reducing sugars. Other browning reactions such as caramelization can occur with carbohydrates but require higher temperature than products would typically be subjected to during distribution and storage. Gelatinization is an important property of starches which involves the swelling of starch granules with water and the subsequent loss of crystallinity. The extent of gelatinization depends on many factors such as temperature, amount of shear, water activity and the presence of other components such as sugars and lipids. Retrogradation of starches is the reassociation or recrystallization process. Retrogradation occurs more readily with amylose than with amylopectin since it is a smaller and branched molecule. Therefore, the use of waxy starches can decrease the level of retrogradation. Often retrogradation will occur when the starch is exposed to freezing or thawing cycles and when moisture migration occurs as in the staling of bread products. Oleosaccharides and polysaccharides in foods may also be broken down by hydrolytic reactions. In foods, one of the most common hydrolytic reactions is the production of starch into corn syrup using acids and enzymatic hydrolysis. Actions of enzymes on starch components are also important in food processes such as fermentation and breathing. Similar hydrolytic reactions can occur with pectin in fruit and vegetables by pectin layers and polycalectronase causing a softening of structure. Lipid spoilage most often occurs due to oxidation reaction or action of lipolytic enzymes and other hydrolytic reactions. Lipid oxidation is the most important degradation method for fats and oils and occurs in many food products including fried foods, nuts, dried fruits, meats, milk powders, coffee and more grain. During lipid oxidation, oxygen attacks unsaturated fats to form color changes, off flavors and sometimes toxic substances. The reacting oxygen can be dissolved within the food or food product, may be in the headspace of the package or may penetrate through the package during storage. To maximize oxidation of lipids, all atoms should be made to keep oxygen from contacting the food product and to use a proper package design that acts as a barrier to oxygen transmission. The number and location of double bonds on the fatty acids or triglycerides is one factor that affects the rate of oxidation. Light and heat are other important considerations since they can catalyze the oxidation reaction. 
Other trace elements in the product can affect the rate and extent of oxidation. Trace metals such as copper and iron can greatly catalyze the oxidation reaction. Another spoilage is due to microbials. Action by microorganism is a common mean of food spoilage and the most common cause of foodborne illness. Microbial spoilage is a major concern for perishable foods such as fresh foods, vegetables, meats, poultry, fish and bakery products. Potential food spoilage microorganism includes bacteria, fungi, viruses and parasites. The growth of most microorganisms can be prevented or slowed by adjusting in-cell microbial load, adjusting temperature of storage, reducing water activity, lowering pH, use of preservatives, and using proper packaging. Some microorganisms simply cause spoilage of foods, while others can cause illness or even death if consumed. There are numerous types of bacteria that can grow and cause spoilage in many different foods. Bacteria are single-celled organisms that are 1 to 5 microns in size. They can be round, rod or spiral in shape and reproduce by binary fission. Yeast are another type of microorganism that can cause food spoilage but are also used in many fermentation operations. Yeast are single-celled fungi that are round or cylindrical in shape and 3 to 5 microns in size. They multiply by budding or binary fission. Important yeast in food include Candida species, Decora species, Saccharomyces species, etc. Molds are another type of fungi with a larger cell size than that forms chains and branches. Molds come in many different shapes, size and colors and they can be seen with a naked eye when they form their branched structure. Molds reproduced by producing spores either sexually or asexually. Important molds that often cause spoilage of food products include Aspergillus species, Fusarium species, Penicillin species and Rhizopus species. Some species of Aspergillus are able to produce secondary metabolites called aflatoxins which can also cause illness. Viruses are much smaller organisms that can only grow and reproduce inside living cells. They are only 0.02 to 0.25 microns in size and contains either DNA or RNA and a protein to reproduce. Viruses are not able to grow in food products but may survive once it enters into the food. Viruses may be present in the food because it came from an infected plant or animal or they may enter the food product by contamination from insects, rodents, infected water or food handlers. If a food handler does not wash their hands well after using the restroom, there is a chance of fecal contamination. Viruses that have been known to cause foodborne illness include Hepatitis A, Rotavirus and BAC or Matkov disease. Other organisms that can cause spoilage of foods are parasites. Parasites are not able to live on their own but infect host animals and plants and live off them. Parasite infections are typically found in meat, fish and selfies. Tapeworms are found in beef, pork and fish. Roundworms are sometimes found in pork, fish and selfish. Protozoa such as Cryptosporidium paraworm are sometimes found in drinking water, fruits and vegetables and have become an increasingly prevalent health risk. Let me summarize the topics. Food spoilage causes not only economic loss but also the unavailability of foods, especially in places of food shortage and with high population. To reduce food spoilage and increase the availability of foods, efficient techniques need to be practiced. Some of the major causes of food deterioration are growth and activities of microorganisms like bacteria, yeast and molds, then activities of natural food enzymes, then spoilage may be due to insects, parasites and rodents, then because of high temperature and low temperature, the moisture and dryness may cause the deterioration, then oxygen, light and time. New methods that are now being studied could be more effective in the future. One of these methods is the development of biosensors which could detect important bacterial metabolites at very low concentrations. Another method is to determine bacterial load rapidly by polymerase chain reaction that we call it as PCR. However, this technique cannot differentiate between live and dead cells. In near future, better and specific biosensors and PCR techniques can be developed to detect spoilage potentials of a food at an early stage.